A local drummer, Skip taking care of the most important beat, his heart. What he ignored that ultimately led to a quintuple bypass. From the University of Kansas Health System. I am amazed. The team here is great. I came on a Tuesday and then by Saturday I had a heart in me. I have never seen a group of people work together so good as this team of heart specialists. I mean, it's just unreal. Stand by to set up show. And the Dolph C. Simons Three, Jr. Family two, Broadcast one. Studio. Roll it. Always makes you feel like you're the most important patient on the planet. I felt heard and that was really big. This is All Things Heart. Good morning, I'm Alexis Del Cid. Welcome back to All Things Heart. Today we're talking about quintuple bypass surgery. Yes, there is such a thing. Sam Platt had blockages in five arteries supplying blood to his heart. That put his busy days and nights of playing music on pause. How long have you been drumming? Oh God, since I was five or six, so forever. When Sam Platt performs, feeling his beats dancing with his own heartbeat, he can't remember a time he wasn't drumming. Drumming is a huge part of what makes Sam, Sam. Like it's the most fun instrument to play. You just gotta carry more stuff, you know? Before he got sick, this is where you could find him on stage, sometimes six nights a week, jamming out at the Green Lady in Kansas City. Even when he's not on stage, he's still drumming, whether it's rehearsing, teaching, or even conducting music therapy sessions. I got to go to a hospital in Springfield one time where they gave me hand drums and they were doing experiments and they found that hand drumming like the patient actually touching the drum and you helping them do that had like a way higher success rate than someone coming in and just playing guitar and singing you a song. Sam never dreamed years later he would be the heart patient in the fight for his life. Sit flat on drum. Although looking back, he realizes he wasn't running at a sustainable pace. So I was playing a lot. I just go, go, go. And I think I was eating whatever I wanted and I would stop and get fast food on the way to the gig. And I was taking a blood pressure pill, but I wasn't really checking my blood pressure very much. I knew I needed to walk more. I knew I needed to exercise more and I, I wasn't doing it. On August 31st, it came to a head. Sam had just returned home from one of his typical jam-packed days capped off with band practice at 10 p.m. And he had a terrible stomach ache. I just felt like I had the worst heartburn ever. At 4 a.m., he finally woke up his wife and had her take him to the hospital in Lawrence, where doctors didn't like what they saw. Next thing he knew, he was in an ambulance headed to the University of Kansas Health System. Thank you. And they did that and we're like, okay, wait, we gotta pull in the big guns. One of those big guns? Hi. Hey, What's there happening? Is. How's it going? Good, man. Thoracic surgeon, Dr. Tyler Zorn. You look good. Yeah. Soon, Sam was scheduled for open heart bypass surgery, and not just any bypass. They did quintuple bypass, and I'm like, oh, <clears throat> like I hadn't even heard of that. I thought quadruple was like the most you could do. Quintuple bypass. The last thing Sam remembers as he drifted off was Dr. Zorn asking him a question about his arms. I think the last thing he said was like, is it okay if I take arteries and veins from wherever because I need to harvest. Sam remembers saying, do whatever you need to do, and it was lights out. We are so thrilled to have Sam joining us today in our studio along with his cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Tyler Zorn. Thank you both for being here. And we should say Sam brought props. We're gonna to get to those in a minute. Oh, feel free. You wanna give us an intro? <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you guys saw each other? It's probably been about it. I mean, in person, probably yeah. well over a year now, I which guess is a so. good which is a good thing. Right, you, you know, love usually your patients. wanna see your cardiac surgeon more than once after surgery, so Sam, your quintuple bypass surgery was September 7th, 2022. So when we first met you, you were meeting Dr. Zorn first time, first time post-surgery. It was your post-op, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. How are you feeling today? I'm great. I feel great. Wonderful. Totally changed my lifestyle. 
uh, they gave me a diet in the hospital of low sugar and low salt, and I've just been doing the same diet. And uh, I think Dr. Zorn told me to walk, and then I went to see Dr. Zer uh, Kurian, and he was like, you have to walk an hour every day. Mm -hmm. And so I walk an hour every day. <laughs> you look great. Thanks. You really do. Your coloring e even looks oh, thank different. You. Yeah. Better. How do you how do you feel when you play your gigs? Do you have more stamina? Yes. Yes. It's it's hard to judge because you're kind of in your own skin all the time and you don't notice the big changes. But right. yeah, time is flying by and we have our little routine that you know when we play and have little breaks and I walk around uh, the club or walk outside uh, on breaks and. It, it does seem easier now, a lot easier. So that's where you get some of your exercise in? A little bit. I don't really count gigs. that in my hour. Right. But, You're just yeah. active. Yeah. So when we go back to the night that you finally went to the hospital in Lawrence, what did they initially see that was so alarming to them? Well, I, I think uh, it was a dissection in my, uh, my artery that goes from my heart to my stomach. Is that what it's, I can't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, well first I got there and we could not figure out what it was. And they gave me like uh, three hits of uh, the uh, really, any anyway, really strong medicine that did nothing. And they're like, okay, we gotta, we've gotta take a picture of, see, see what's going on, do a MRI. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not remembering all the well, time. It's, time it's, it's yeah, hard for it's, a yeah, non-medical person to know in that moment what's happening. It was a celiac, celiac dissection. Celiac artery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Celiac so dissection. What happens during a celiac dissection? What was happening well, inside it's not, Sam? It's not something that we commonly see, but usually people, the Arenthra CT scanner, are just trying to figure out what's going on. You get contrasted, you know, contrasted study that lights up the arteries. And a celiac artery is the celiac artery goes to the stomach, you know, spleen. Uh, liver, um, and so uh, dissection is just a tear of that blood vessel, and so, you know, in um, you know, it could compromise blood flow to one of those organs, and maybe that's what Sam was feeling. What would um, have happened if Sam had just taken Tums and said, "I'm going to wait this out"? He said it felt like heartburn. I don't know. It's hard. You know, it's hard to know, uh, predict the future, what would have happened. But obviously, you know, he was, you know, he was treated for the celiac dissection as well as his heart disease in the same hospital visit. So it's not hard to imagine that one of those things could have caught up with him. And you yeah. were called in to perform a quintuple bypass. Well, you know, the, um, he was uh, initially brought here and evaluated further, and that's when they figured out that he had something going on with his heart. And so they get studies to, uh, to figure out exactly how serious things are. And, and the roadmap for us as cardiac surgeons when we do bypass surgery is uh, what we call left heart cath, and so um, it shows us which blood vessels are blocked and which, you know, which parts of the heart need more blood flow, and so that's what we use to, to guide how many bypasses we'll, we'll likely do. And so, I mean, as a, as a non-medical person, and Sam, you said this, you thought four was the most you could do. Right. You know, I've known people who've had double or triple. How rare is a quintuple bypass? I don't know. I would say, you know, most commonly we're performing, you know, Bypass surgeries, two, three, four bypasses. Rare. We perform one, you know, uh, unusually to perform five, but it's really just what 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 is needed, and so that's. And so, in a nutshell, what are you doing during a bypass? So, um, you know, you have to get blood vessels to do these bypasses. There are certain parts of of the heart and blood vessels that are diseased, and you basically route blood flow around you know, those blockages, you don't take out the blockages themselves, so those will always be there. Um, uh, and so the artery from the chest wall, the, the left internal mammary artery plugs straight in, so it just gets its blood, blood flow from where it came in initially. And then the veins hook up to the aorta, um, which is the major blood vessel uh, that, um, that the heart ejects blood out into, and so. So for each blockage, you're, you're physically creating a new path. A new path around that block. And and you got some of that stuff from Sam's arms to yeah. create those new paths. Yeah, that's and right. You but you're about to show us your arm. Yes. Yeah, uh, so there's. Um, I don't there's, know if you can see that from the camera. Yeah. We're going to try to zoom in there if you can hold it up. But it to goes the from one. here to here. It looks very faint now. Yeah. You did a good job with the the, closure. With the scar yeah. with the closure yeah. and everything. 
Are we going to show the, no, yeah, oh. yeah. You can if you, you can. want. Uh, we saw that. You yeah, don't have to. Oh, no. it's in the video. Um, we do have an image of Sam's heart, and I would love to put this up for our viewers. What are we seeing here, Dr. Yeah, so Zorn? This is, the, this is the left heart cath, and so this is what we look at, and obviously there's uh, many different projections, angles, and then there's two main coronary arteries that come off the aorta, um, and uh, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery splits early into the left internal, left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex artery. Those have branches. Those uh -huh. are usually where the, the blockages are. And those, so can you see the blockages? Yeah, you can see the blockages. What should it look like there? Cause so usually it's just a, a vessel that uh, is smooth. There's no, you know, there's no irregular, you know, areas to it. Okay. Um, you know, it doesn't taper in diameter, but you can see in different areas where it narrows abruptly and then gets bigger. You can use that to determine just this, just how severe those blockages are. And sometimes there's more invasive studies you need to do to get a better idea for how bad those blockages are. But you can see, and he had or maybe you, maybe you can't, um, but just how, you know, how many of those vessels are affected. That looked alarming, and he had five he had that five. were blocked. What's the most you can have blocked and still survive? What have you seen? I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, there are multiple different, um, you know, branches that come off of each of these main arteries, so theoretically you could probably have many blockages, but when we do bypass surgeries, you know, w what we bypass to has to be a reasonable blood vessel to sew that, you know, new conduit into. And so um, Sam had, you know, five reasonable targets for bypass wow. surgery. And so we try and do as much as we can so we can restore blood flow to as much of that heart to, um, to allow it to last as long as we want it to. So, yeah. Sam, you were so um, honest in sharing you're a musician health wasn't top of mind. You were playing your gigs, getting your fast food, and that was probably for most of your adult life. So do you think these blockages, Dr. Zorn, happened gradually over the years, or is it possible this can all happen at once in a short period of time? Oh, I mean, for sure these happen gradually over a number of years and decades. Um, these are probably happening, happening early in our life than we would like to think they are, and so um, sometimes, you know, blockages, you know, um, progress very rapidly, and that's when people have major heart attacks, you know, end up in the hospital, you know, very quickly proceeding to the cath lab for things like stents. And other times, you know, these blockages happen over time, years, decades, um, and they get to the point where they're affecting you in a more chronic way. You know, you're, um, you're becoming more fatigued, you're um, having chest pain when you exert yourself, you know, or other symptoms, so. Do you think your family noticed that your health was starting to slip before you did? Was anyone saying, hey, I met, I met your daughter when we first met you. Yeah. Was she like, dad, you gotta start eating healthier. You gotta go for walks. A little bit, but uh, our, that our family is a family of bakers. Oh, right. <laughs> Hard to come so back we're anything. all kind of baking for each other, and right. love is food. And my right. mom and my both sides of our family are food equals love. So we really had to change our lifestyle together, and that made a big difference. So uh, I, I I'm surprised that uh, people have come to the club and see me and said, "Wow, you like like you said, your color looks so different." Yes. I, and you look more I didn't trim. realize that at the time out. you looked pale and you just didn't look as healthy as you do now. I think mm -hmm. we, like I said before, I think we get used to our own skin and how we're living and we get in these habits and we just keep going, you know, mm -hmm. instead of like thinking about, I think people need to think often about, you know, what you're eating, look at the labels and exercising yeah. and drinking lots of water. So. Have you been able to, you said food is love, and food is such an important part for so many people, and it is love for so many families. Have you found ways around that to bake differently, to make different recipes and things? Exactly, yes, yes. We've, we've gone through and tried every sugar substitute and stevia mm -hmm. and different things, and uh, we've had some luck, but really it's mostly we've been cutting back on desserts and Food is love could be as a different, you know, like the a salad or Mediterranean diet where it's a little more healthy option. So making a, a creative meal. Yeah.
Uh, you, for you, music is your life. That yeah, is clear. Yeah. Did your playing have to pause for a very long time after the surgery because they had to take things harvest from your arm because Dr. Zorn had to do that? A little bit, but a lot of it was the overall recovery from surgery and just building up my stamina. Uh, uh, PT was amazing for building, getting that back, mm -hmm. and uh, friends came out to visit and we would jam a little, just a little bit, but I was kind of ready to go because when I had the heart attack I was working on some new songs that a friend had written at Green Lady and those like stayed in my head and were on repeat. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty soon after surgery when I was laying in the bed recovering I was already at least practicing in my mind and then I would turn on my phone or tap you know to I was like okay I gotta get ready for the next gig because we're gonna play these songs and they're like whoa just no hurry Take it easy. <laughs> your gig will be there yeah uh, exactly that's what they said then yeah it's yours when you get back so it's such an interesting story and I think it's super interesting that you harvest from the arm do you always have to do that and are you always asking them it, when they're there say hey do you mind if I take this from your arm yeah no we talk about it um, you know we found more and more that especially in younger patients that if we can do more what we call arterial conduct so there's arteries and veins and the arteries are much you know much better suited to hair uh, handle you know that degree of blood flow at a higher pressure and so we we see that these vessels last longer over time so for younger patients it makes more sense to take you know arteries from the arm or another artery from the chest wall on the right side because um, we think that will increase their lifespan um, and so um, the veins are good and they uh, they do well but they have uh, you know a shorter time period that they stay open we're getting questions from our viewers already and we love our questions from our community because they're really the heartbeat of our program so right now you can take some time and send your questions to us on youtube facebook the x platform or the all things heart email you connect with us in real time when you send messages there all the links are right there on your screen so i want to go to some of the questions already submitted from our viewers and brett wants to know what are the symptoms of a blocked artery is there a test that would have detected this earlier in SAM? Yes, yeah, so I think we touched on it a little bit, but you know, chest pain, shoulder pain, jaw pain that's new, mostly with exertion is, you know, uh, is probably the more common symptoms. Just, you know, being more fatigued over time, being able to do less. Um, sometimes, like in Sam's case, you know, you can actually present with GI complaints or heartburn as some of the first signs. You know, are things, you know, are there things that we could do to prevent it? And we talked on that too, you know, Health. E eating healthy, going to see your doctor, being on the right medications based on, uh, based on your lab profile or your, your, your blood pressure um, can really probably uh, slow the progression of the disease because, you know, like we talked about, this is something that builds up, you know, over time. Is there a scan that people watching could request the next time they're at the doctor? I, I mean, see if they have request this. is a strong word, but I think as you go to your physician and you, you know, you, you engage with a cardiologist, you know, the, um, the suggested scans may be like a calcium score or if okay. that's bad, a stress test. And, and these things will kind of lead you down a path of, you know, uh, of looking at this before kind of it rears its ugly head. And we offer calcium score tests, obviously, here. We've done um, segments and stories on that as well. And, um, our boss took one. She was very happy yeah. to score a zero. Only test you want to score a zero yeah. on. <laughs> um, Sam, Gretchen has a question. She wants to know if you're you're all done having surgeries, or do you have you been told that the veins will be be good forever? Oh, um, I'm done with surgery, but. Uh, uh, Dr. Zorn said, is the average like 10 or 20 yeah, years? Yeah, I think uh -huh. the average, the, the veins are patent is about 10 years. Um, certainly they can last much longer than that and hopefully years do, but ultimately if, if one or two goes down, it doesn't necessarily mean he needs to head back to the operating room or it doesn't necessarily mean that he will even feel it. As, as you know, disease builds up over time, the heart can learn to you know, get blood flow from other places and hopefully. So the veins you put, you took from his arm, you harvested and put there, they last for about 10 years? The veins uh, we usually take from the leg. From the leg, um, okay. And uh, those last on average about 10 years. What about what you took from Sam's arm? You know, hopefully that will last as long as, you know, the artery from the chest wall that we take the lima, but 
could last, you know, hopefully for the rest of his life. Sweet. But, be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Corey has a question for you, Sam. He, he writes, you were running on fumes before your surgery. Have you needed to cut back on gigs? No. <laughs> well, I, I built up to it. Uh, I think it was in October, which was pretty soon. I was still in the middle of PT that I started getting calls like, hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, we should jam sometime. And and uh, Ken was like, how about tonight? So mm -hmm. <laughs> I put on my tie and went down there and called my wife and she's like, you're going to the gig, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, and she's like, well, I'm coming down there because you're not driving home. To monitor things. Right, so I lasted about two hours on the first gig until my friend Brian could come up and relieve me. Were you feeling tired? Oh, well, I was fine until I saw him over my shoulder and then my body was like, really? okay, he's here, you're done. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, all of it is a gradual build back up to, just like you have a regular job where you work five days a week, I just happen to work at night. What so. do you eat? You mentioned you were doing fast food every night. Do you bring your own snacks now? Yes, or I take care of it before I go down there. I, I, I don't eat any fast food, no pop. Uh, so I'm water, sugar, I mean water, tea, plain tea and uh -huh. coffee. Uh, but yeah, basically I make little, I'm kind of a snacker, so mm -hmm. instead of three big meals, I sort of have kind of one real meal, but most of the time I just have, I have my little uh, vegetable sticks or a protein bar or something I can grab and take in the car with me, but it's it's better than fast food. Sure, yeah. and you probably have a better better budget now. Oh more yeah, money. we've saved lots of it's, money. Doing it, this, yeah. it adds up. Jeremy, um, our Facebook viewer, writes in, what are the ramifications for the parts of the body that provided the veins for the surgery that now have less veins? Yeah, so for the arm, um, there's a radial artery and an ulnar artery. We take the radial artery as long as we can verify that the ulnar artery has enough you know, blood flow to supply the so arm. Where's and the, the radial hand. artery? So the radial artery looking. runs down the outside. The outside, here, so that's what the you ulnar took. Artery here. So we make sure the ulnar artery will be able to supply the hand safely after surgery. If we do that, we can safely take it without any ramifications. Um, and the veins, uh, similarly, uh, the saphenous vein graft that we take uh, for bypass grafts, it's a superficial vein, and so um, the, other, the other veins in that leg usually make up for the, the work that that vein did. So there can be a little bit more swelling in that leg postoperatively, but usually that gets better with time. Did you have swelling in your hand or your arm? Not much, a little bit, but no. Right away. It, it, yeah. Carrie has a question, Sam. Carrie wants to know, where is Sam playing next? My uh, husband and I want to go see him. All weekend at Green Lady Lounge downstairs. We're, this weekend we're down, it's late. Uh, Friday and Saturday is 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. But Sunday I'm playing with Tim Reed. He's a singer, piano player that moved here from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it's the same place, down, downstairs at Green Lady on Sunday, 8.30 to 11:30, so that's not quite as late. So, right. Yeah. So you got two two options for your for your next two gigs. Yeah. When do you sleep? What's your schedule like? I'm always interested in people's sleep schedules. I, I mean, if it's two, it takes me an hour to get home and then get ready for bed. And I, I don't. I sometimes I take little cat naps. Yeah. But uh, I'll sleep in in the morning a little bit when my wife goes to work, and then I'll wake up and go to the go walk. So, Take your walk, do your yeah, exercise. Yeah, that's my, I get up and walk, so. Gary has a great question for Dr. Zorn. He wants to know how many doctors are involved in the surgery and does Dr. Zorn remove the veins and arteries or is that someone else? Yes, yeah, so we have, I mean, there, there are multiple doctors involved with the case. There's an anesthesiologist and myself usually. Um, there are, we usually have physician assistants that help us with um, conduit harvest as you know as we get the artery from the chest wall most of the time it's the surgeon that's doing that um, the physician assistants will um, you know work on the artery from the arm or the veins from the legs so how that long? we all do it in concert in concert mm -hmm. how long does this whole process take like how long were you standing over Sam working on him uh, the whole surgery everything yeah uh, probably about four hours and is that one of many you'll be doing in the day, or is that your big thing for the yeah, day? Yeah, there's usually probably no more than two in a day, most of the time just one, so. That's a lot of standing. What shoes do you wear? 
Uh, just regular Joggers, tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Yeah. You're not going to want to yeah. be in dress shoes for that. No, 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 no. You got to be in comfy shoes. This is such an interesting topic, and I just love, Sam, that you're here today, and you look yeah. amazing. Oh, thank you. When it comes to final thoughts for our viewers, what message would you want to send to other people who might be burning the candle at both ends as well, just like you before your emergency? Stop and take a breath and get your heart checked because uh, I just kept going to the doctor and they would be like, you're fine, good to go. But in, until we did that cath, we really, until you have a camera in there, I don't think you really know exactly what's going on, right? So I would just, you know, have it on your mind and uh, try to eat more healthy and walk as much as you can, drink lots of water, so. Is that your same advice? To yeah, yours? I mean, I think, you know, Sam is, the ideal patient now and what he's doing now is you know what we should all be doing you know for the majority of our life you know it, it must feel good to see a patient so compliant right with everything it have you ever been called easier. compliant yeah. before? never i'm a jazz musician <laughs> <laughs> he's a compliant patient and an excellent jazz musician yeah. we love sharing the incredible work that our doctors like dr zorn do here at the health system we also love showing you what life looks like for them outside of the hospital walls now for a secret look into the guardians of healthcare at the University of Kansas Health System, let's go behind the mask. We are going behind the mask with Dr. Zorn, who has the cutest family ever. Tell us about your family. Uh, so my wife, Cassie, who've been married, you know, for I don't know, we better 18 get this one years right. now. 18? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have four kids. My oldest daughter, Cameron, is 16, about to be 17 years old, a junior in high school. Uh, Preston is in middle school, he's 13. John is 11, uh, he's in elementary school. And, and, then, uh, and then we have Levi, who's our fourth one. You're seven. not busy yeah. at all at home, are you? Not, it's, no it's chaos. usually as busy as home, <laughs> at home as it is at work, so. Uh, this is Heart Month, and we also, well, we need a soundtrack to go with Heart Month, so mm. I would, I'd love to say this. Hit it, Sam. We want to celebrate the cardiology department's growth. As you know, the health system just celebrated its 25 year anniversary. What are you playing by the way? What are, the, oh, you got the tambourine? This is amazing. Okay, before Mid-America Cardiology transitioned to the health system in 2000, the health system had three cardiologists on staff. Now we have nearly 60 cardiology physicians and hundreds of support staff all focused on providing incredible care to our patients like Sam. Hats off to the entire cardiology team. Hats off to Dr. Zorn. You might be a musician yeah. too. How's, he, how's his yeah. beat? It's great. <laughs> you think he has potential or yeah, should he not man, put his good day job? job? Come down. You play too late, I think, for me. Exactly. Yeah. You come down between time. surgeries. <laughs> That's when the kids go out, yeah. is late at night. That's true. Thank you so much for joining the conversation today. Thank you to Dr. Zorn for making time. I know you're busy. We know we got you up probably earlier than you ever get up <laughs> instead of doctor's appointments. You're here, though. Thank you. You look amazing, Sam. Thank you for we, having me. We appreciate it, and you do look you look fantastic. Okay, I can't wait you. to Thanks. see you play at the Green Lady. Coming up next week on All Things Heart, back-to-back -back diagnoses led this patient to make some serious life changes. You'll see the workout she developed focused on the heart that is so successful other doctors are prescribing it to their patients. That's next Thursday at 8 a.m. Coming up tomorrow on the Morning Medical Update. Carpal tunnel syndrome, leave it for too long and it can lead to permanent damage. But several new surgical techniques offer relief. I'm Jessica Lovell on the next Morning Medical Update. See how ultrasound leads to less pain, faster recovery, and allows patients to stay awake and watch surgeons do their work. Friday at 8.